I know it which is. means it says that there's video videotaping. Yeah, we're making an announcement today that Car Carolyn and Shannon, <laughs> Sh Shannon, girl. We live near a hospital. She lives near a hospital. Oh, uh, yeah. And I have this gorgeous view. Show them that. Oh, there it is. It's happening. It's happening. All uh, the time. We did realize that over this winter break that we have a pretty good on-screen chemistry. We did a radio show. That was a really fun show, too. Yeah. So that I was, think, was great. I think we should make a new show. We could. Where are we going tonight? We're going to church tonight. We're going to church. We're going to church. Yeah. We... we Yes, we are going to church. Shannon, do you believe in God? I believe in a higher power. Whether I do too. It's, 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 it's a God or not, I think that there's something outside of what we live in now. There's some other energy out yes, there. Yes, exactly. Maybe can, we should maybe we should check out all kinds of churches. Maybe we should find God somewhere. And maybe we should or call find some kind of spirituality. Spirituality, yeah. Yes. Whatever it is. Whatever that it is. Whatever it is, we are going to find it. Or we are going to try at least. Yeah. So yeah. tonight we're going to go to Seaport Community Church. Yes. I'm not exactly sure what denomination type. I don't Nor know if they're Baptist. I. I think it's just like, I think it's one of those general like we just like God. Messages about spirituality and God are great. They're yeah. fantastic. I they think teach that morals. That, yes. And I think that's something that everybody needs to know. Yeah. But maybe also some of us need a little uplifting. Like myself, I could use a little up. And I'm not sure if there's, you know, what's out there. But maybe one of these places that we visit will spark something. And even if it causes some inspiration or motivation, then that's good. I actually think that it that it will be good. It'll, I think yeah. it'll be it'll be at least uplifting to see what's out there and see how yeah. how other people find inspiration and find some kind of spirituality. Yeah. So for two people that are not super spiritual and don't actively practice, we're going to go to church tonight and we're see going. how it goes, and then maybe we'll try a different place, and then we'll, we'll see, see how, how that goes. Yeah. Because the sermons are actually in in church, churches and denominations that I've been at, the sermons are actually really good. Like yeah. they're very like uplift, uplifting. They have a really good mess, message to share, and I and I like that. Yeah, I definitely like it. It's really loud out here. It is. I mean, there's it's kind of like a main road kind of here down in New London. I think we London. should just go to church right now. We should go to yeah. We're gonna we're go gonna to go to church. <laughs> She'll be so surprised to see you. This is my friend Melissa. She's the only person we knew here, so she was kind of our in. I had surprised her once before a couple years ago with my friend Blakely when she was starring as Peppermint Patty in the Christmas pageant. Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. This is Mr. Brad Whipple. He's the pastor. He's a pretty chill guy, and you can tell by that biker stand behind him that, yes, this is a biker church. They have a group called Full Throttle. Very inclusive, very cool. In the summers, they have cookouts and barbecues where they bless the bikes and they all ride together. On this night, we made sure to check in on Facebook because I guess that's a thing. And also made sure to open up our Uverse app just in case we didn't have a Bible handy. The second half of the night, we had a little theology lesson. It was kind of like being in college again, but let us tell you about it. So we're going to talk about our closing thoughts. We just got, well, we didn't just get back. Not we got, just. We got back from, from our church, from our church excursion, mm -hmm. which was actually quite enlightening. So what did you learn today, Shannon? Well, you know, I'll have to say that I learned um, a little bit about the theology behind a lot of the stories that I am familiar with. Like, you know, basically they talked about the coming of Jesus back into the world. The second coming. They said there are some people that believe in the first coming, which I don't know. Are the Jews. 
Yeah, but he already. Like I'm not really sure about that. I don't that know how that goes either. Actually. But they're saying it's the second coming, which makes right. sense to me because I thought he was already here, crucified, died, and then he comes back. Right. Again. I don't, yeah, I don't really know all of that stuff there. But they actually went into kind of the reasons why that's going to, ha ha to happen, which I had never heard before in any other church that I've been in, but I've never really sat in like a theology session be before it's always just been you know you go to you go to church on a sunday and you hear the sermon and the gospel and, and we hope you don't you, fall asleep right you sing and you pray and whatever whatever but it was never anything about this is why we think this is going to come about so i thought that was pretty interesting i will I say i will say that this seems like a very modern church um, they're very cool with like they have their like projector and stuff, but you know, um, Melissa had her U version app for the Bible, and instead of like just preaching, it didn't feel like that. You're right, it felt like uh, a discussion, like with us, we were part of it, yeah. But you also have to remember. This is church on a Wednesday night. That's true. It's not, you know, Sunday, everybody's going to church in their best dress or however right. everybody does that. And, right. You know, praising the word of the Lord, yada, yada. But Well, maybe that's just like the formal. Like for those right. who want to be real formal about it, maybe they can go. But then this Wednesday night is really about the people that like want to get deeper into it. Yeah, a bit more lax. there was a couple of activities going on. There was younger members of the church getting awards. Yeah, that went right over my head. I, they, I'm not really sure like, what that was going on. And I was like, uh, what do we there do? There was music playing when we first got there. Mm -hmm. There was a band, and the band was really, really good. was like all musical instruments instead of like a hanging dead body of Christ. Right. Or, they, it was they did it have was very a, they, warm. They did have a cross it was over off to the on side. the side. Mm -hmm. It had like a sash over it. It was it was it just was, like hey I'm here. It, right. It wasn't Jesus oh my goodness, around. Jesus right in your face all of the time because like, what'd you do this week to make you go to hell? <laughs> like, what sins have you done? It was just like hey, look, oh my goodness. You know, right. This, this church felt like hey we know you screwed up this week, but I mean, yeah. come on in anyway. Come on in. We're going to sing some songs and we're going to talk about the gospel of the Lord. And with electric guitars. With electric guitars? And there was an acoustic, there was, no, did he have an electric or an acoustic gu 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 guitar? I don't know what the guy was playing, but for like The guy most... that was singing or the other yeah. guy? No, the guy that was like singing, but like for the most of the night, all I could do was stare at this red electric guitar on the stage. Oh, on the side that nobody was playing. I couldn't I stop staring at that. I actually saw that guitar at the end of the night. I didn't mm -hmm. focus in on it at first. It was so bright. Yeah, it definitely was. But the music was really good. I felt very... It didn't feel churchy. No, it wasn't churchy. It just made you kind of... You know, you know it's just cool. I can I can get I can get down with, with, with this. But I do love that the pastor was singing it like Broadway style. Like, oh my goodness, he was, he was. He totally was. But I, mean, I, I like arms that. Arms out, I mean, in like it. We were like, like jamming, like a little bit of like a hip hop melody, and then he was like, Boo! which yeah, is which great. Which is great. <laughs> 
because he was still getting down with his bad self. Right. But, he was know? doing his own thing, his uh -huh. own interpretation of it, which uh -huh. is kind of... I do that the, with hip-hop songs. <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of the theme of this church. Really. Do your own thing. It was, yeah. Do like, your thing. come on in. Will Well, everybody was so nice. Mm -hmm. They were you know, introducing themselves and they were very friendly and just kind of talking amongst themselves during this theology thing about the coming of G Jesus. It was, it was good. I felt, I felt good about it. It really made you think, which church doesn't really always do. get you to do. Right. It I, was, yeah. I like that they are acknowledge that times are changing and the church has to ch change with the times, and we figured out they are just basically Christian. They're yeah. Not, there's no real denomination. It's not like, oh, we're a Baptist or we're Lutheran. No, they're, they're just Christian. basic Christians. Yes. We like God, and here's our view of it. They believe that they have a pre... Oh, God, what was it? <laughs> Get it? Oh, God? <laughs> it was like pre... What was after the chaos? After the rapture. The rapture comes and takes all the people that love God... And they, the they bride, they call it. They take, which is pretty the much bride the, is the church, the, the church, church people. the church pe people. But they call it tribulation. Tribulation. They're right. on the pre, according to their pre tribulation. Pre -tribulation. So they right. like pre-ordered their tickets to get the hell out when chaos exactly. erupts. Exactly. Yeah. And then they also believe in the second coming of the Christ instead of the first. So that's where they differ. So they made their views really clear and like what their this is what we preach here. This is how it is. They've also done like mi missions out to like Jerusalem and like spoken with like you A know lot of churches do that. Jews and ra rabbis and which I kind of thought was good. I don't really I know like what that. other what other churches do. I'm not really very churchy kind of a gal. Well, the fact that they go to Jerusalem and learn from the Jews is cool because usually missionaries go out and they just preach the word of God. But this guy was like, hey, the pastor, he was like, hey, I went to Israel and right. this is what the rabbis are saying. Right. It's nice to know that they talk because I yeah. honestly didn't know yep. that either. When we first started getting into this theology le lesson, it was the pastor was like, okay, everybody get out their Bibles. And I was like, oh no. I'm like, I don't really know how I'm supposed to feel about this. And I'm kind of looking around and people are getting out their Bibles. And I'm like, I don't really know anything about. I just figured I'd listen. The Bible, like, I know, like, the basic books and stuff, like, right, yeah. like that. Like, I don't know the passages. I can't quote the Bible. Right, same. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. Is this going to be Bible preaching? But it wasn't like that whatsoever. It was very that was much... That kind of, like, peppered in. It was like, hey, praise. So right, like, okay, but cool, it was yeah. like... Anyway, back to what we were talking about. Right, it's like, so this is how Jesus is supposed to come about, or how we believe he's supposed mm -hmm. to come about. And these are the scriptures and the passages in the Bible that Support. lend to that. Right, yeah. which I definitely liked. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a good way to actually really do it, because if you're familiar with you know, religious teachings in the Bible, they pretty much just kind of pelt you with verses and quotes. Do good or you're going to hell. Right. Don't do but, this or you're going to hell. But that wasn't like this. It was, it was like, okay, read me this verse here and I'm going to give you my interpretation of how this relates mm -hmm. to the theological side of what we're speaking about now, which I... Which was which was good. It was a new view on it for me. What was cool, I think, about it is that um, a lot of people right now are saying that because Trump was elected, this is the end times. Because they say that he, he, they did talk about the rapture as like the rapture takes everybody out, but then it's the tribulations after. The tribulations is what some people believe that even. The Christians have to go through it halfway, and then some people believe you have to go all the way, and then some people believe God will come for you after tribulation. After, tribulate. right. So you so, have to go through it all. Right. It so, depends on which version of it you believe yeah, in. Yeah, these guys believed in, like, the pre-tickets. The pre, the pre -tickets. But God is going to come. Jesus is going to come. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to suffer. He is going to save all of his followers before any of that comes about. And then it's going to come about for three and a half years and then it's going to be I think it's seven the first three years 
it's gonna be the worst. And then it takes seven, he said I, seven. Years. I heard seven, but then it was like three and a half yeah. of, and then, and then like Armageddon comes, yeah. and then Christ will right. come back down, and then his people will come back down, and he will rule for for like a millennial or some something like that. Yeah, and I would, yeah. I'm not saying that these guys were saying Trump, they absolutely were saying Trump actually is not part of it, but what's interesting to me is that I've read a lot about um, uh, prophecies, I've read a lot about conspiracy theories, and a lot of people have said that Trump is the start of the end times and that he was put here by the devil to separate people which is what's happening is well our own people are fighting and then excuse me and then also what's happening while he's in in power is like the hurricanes the earthquakes all of those things are mentioned in the tribulation and that's the kind of stuff that popped up right and that was a big a red big flag. a big thing so one of the things that they talked about was how do you know when Jesus is going to come back? And there was a couple of scriptures and passages that they quoted about wars among na nations, wars amongst tribes, earthquakes, fam fam famines, famines no. all of those kind of things. And all of those things are kind of happening now. Yeah. And I kind of like, you know, nudged Carolyn a, yeah. a little bit and I, I was, was like, like uh, I was like, uh, that's kind of, but I mean, if you really think about it, hasn't that been going on all the time though? I mean, when well, has there, when has there not been nations or tribes at war? When has there not been earthquakes and famines and yeah, all of those true. kind of things? Here's the thing. So, I mean, I think we're probably more attuned to it now. Because we're looking for it. Not because we're looking for it, but we're a little bit older now. Like, we know what's going on in the world. We keep That's up true. With the current, I think about that, too. We sometimes. keep up with the current with the current events. We know right. that there's, you know, tsunamis and earthquakes, and, and there's... You know, probably hundreds of con con countries that are going through some sort of famine. And in my lifetime, I don't really think that I've known a time that there hasn't been a war going on. That's in true. Some, there's always a war. There's always war. So it kind of depends on how you view it. I mean, can you, can you kind of... Compare Trump to like an antichrist. I mean, some people are. Some people I'm are. I'm not saying that's what we're saying. We're not. I'm not but, saying that either. And but, they weren't saying that either. No, they were actually saying no, it's not him. But, but I mean, there are people you that can do definitely that. see the parallels between right. that kind of things, and to see how some people might view that. This is the first time in history, really, not the first time in history, I should say, but the first time in a long time that people are. I mean. And you're like splitting, but it, like when you say like it could be because we're older, I have thought of that too. Yeah. Like, but he, because we live in a social media age, like how yes. many people unfriended you because you voted for Bush or, or Bush or not even Bush, but like for Trump, but like, or Obama or whoever, or whatever. I usually keep my political things uh, you're outside. Good. You're of, good about that. I'm not. I, I, I don't like that's not something that I delve into. I do have my own opinions and own beliefs. However, it's something that I keep to, to but even myself. If not, but if it's even not that, like right now, it's not a political thing. Right now, people are fighting about guns. So like, that's dividing people. People like, I deleted a couple people off my Facebook because I just couldn't handle the really asinine things that they were saying. So like, we're dividing ourselves and it's easier to do it now because it's literally the click of a button. So I think people right. feel it more because now there's like physical proof. Like I unfriended and blocked this person and this person and this person because right. you're so, just I mean, that's like, hands. It's it's kind of it's kind of some of the things that the Bible says about a about a divided land about you know all of Families these kind fighting, of friends fighting. Right, like, right. Like people fighting on the same civil civil. Arguments, is that yeah. What you said? yeah, you can definitely see the parallels between today's times. Do I really think that the coming of Jesus is going to be happening any time in my life? I don't really think so. I mean, I mean, if it, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not a very religious person as it is. I mean, I think the stories are great. I think the Bible has really good morals to teach people throughout their lives 
Um, but I will say, I don't really know if I think that it really happened or if Jesus is going to be coming around. However, it's, it's really good to get a different perspective from another group of people outside of what you think. Right. We had no idea. Just so you guys know, we had no idea going into this really what they believe. The only thing I really did know is that from my friend Melissa that, you know, they are very inclusive. I asked her, like, are you okay with, like, people of the homosexuality? Like, and she's like, we just take whoever. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Which I was cool. They but seemed other than very that, o open, very yeah. receptive. Other than it that, was... I didn't know anything about what they believed or what they preached or anything. Like, we I both went in there open-minded. I got a good vibe from it at the end of yeah, the day. Yeah, it felt like... It was a really good, it was a good, it was a good vibe. Do I know if, if I'm going to like go back again on a regular basis I'm not really I'm not really sure yet like I think I need to to see kind of what else is going on out in the religious spiritual world to see where I think I might belong that's true I mean you know yeah but I, but I, I did really like like it I got a, bi a Bible which I'm totally stoked, stoked about. I got hold a on. water bottle. Hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute. Pause. pause. Hold on, we don't have to pause it. I just have to come over here and we get it. We each had a gift. Which so I have a Bible already, so I, asked I for don't the water have a Bible. I don't have one. And I spoke with Melissa, who is a friend of of both of ours. Yes. And I was like, you know what? I was like, you know. I was like, I've always been really intrigued about wanting to read the Bible and kind she of... She popped that right and out. And she was like, I have something for you. And do you know what? I'm kind of stoked about it. Yeah. Like, I really think that I am going to actually sit down on a night that I have to my to myself. And I'm going to start to read it. Just because I'm intrigued by what it has to say. I don't know all of the stories and I don't know all of you know, the teachings, and I think I'm going to do it. So that was really good. Yeah, that's good. It is. And I went because... So stoked. I was so hoping... stoked about it. <laughs> I, I really was, am. <laughs> I was hoping to get, like, some kind of... I just, you know, going through hard times right now, I was just like, you know what, maybe I'll go there and I'll hear some inspirational message or whatever. And it wasn't really a message that I heard, but at it, the at it the felt end, good. at the at the end, when the pastor was wrapping everything up, yeah. and he was like, you know, if there's anybody out there that's going through tough times or doesn't believe in any of this, yeah. and you and I looked at each other we're and like, we, we were like, <laughs> well, we're that's just, us. We're just feeling the water. But I mean, that was kind of like sort of. A thing that I was like like I connected to most people yeah. look to church when they're either rock bottom like a lot of alcoholics or narcotics anonymous like those people like I know they find God and then they get clean and then there's other people who are just having trouble in their lives and not gonna lie like part of me decided to go because I was like you know my life can't get any worse what <laughs> really I was just yeah. like it can't get any worse Fair it's not gonna hurt me so um, it's an it's alarm. It's time for bed. Oh, it's 10 o'clock! <laughs> it's alarm, time for bed! My alarm's <laughs> quiet there. I don't know what, she, what she's doing. <laughs> I said it. I told, so I lied. I told her I was going to bed. I'm not. Um, <laughs> no, but I was like, you know, it maybe... It is past your bedtime. It is. I, I went and I thought, maybe uh, I'll find, some, like, it'll just say something. I'm the kind of person that really doesn't follow through anything, so I probably won't go every week, obviously. No. And we really just went to see what their views were, and it's a strong chance that we'll go back again, but we yeah. also want to check out what other people are saying and also co compare, you know, because part of me, my biggest thing in life is the paranormal, and I believe in energy and the universe, and I think these are all the same thing it might be the same thing i would have to agree with you the pastor was speaking about something that happened about 40 years ago yes right in our own area right on 95 about passengers experiencing people appearing in their vehicles ghost and was, passengers like ghost passengers and it was really weird we are going to research this and yes. by we i mean her <laughs> <laughs> You're, she's going to research this right, and try to, or we can go to the library together. But if, but if we then you're gonna have to be very quiet. Oh, 
which I mean we're really not very good at. Yeah. So. Well, we won't have any wine when we go to the library. That's lies. Well, actually, the <laughs> last time we were, the last time we were at the library, we were totally drunk. Yeah, but so we I weren't mean, in the library. We're actually at a like mystery dinner, but anyway. Right, but I mean, yeah, I mean, there's pretty much. I mean, you see this. At this point, the camera died, but you guys get the idea. We could talk forever on how the parallels of conspiracy theories and church ideas come together, and I will probably explore that in another video. But for now, we just want to thank the people of Seaport Community Church for welcoming us in with open arms. We really did enjoy our time there, we learned a lot, and we'll probably be back again. So special thanks to Melissa as well for being such a great hostess even though she didn't expect us there. Until next time, see ya!